So I'm going to make a, a, hopefully a short video and a simple so most can understand. But I'm, I get a lot of uh, messages, probably 20 a week, maybe 30 a week, asking about the third eye and how to open the third eye. And so hopefully I can explain it a little better in this video and allow people to realize that the opening of the third eye is a metaphoric thing. It's not like going into a trance and seeing things that, that are beyond. It doesn't always have to involve DMT. DMT is, in my opinion, the most effective way, but it is not required to opening the third eye. One simply has to realize who self is. The, the opening of the third eye is simply when you're ready to stop playing the game of pretending and you're ready to awaken from the dream that you've been living in. And it's when people are most unhappy that they seek to stop playing this game of insanity within themselves. The, and it's you have to figure out, it's, it's you awakening from this dream is you finally admitting to yourself that you're not the character that you've been playing as, that you're not the, the person you see in the mirror. It's you finally killing and releasing yourself from this attachment to the ego, the one that you live as day after day, at work, as people who, who around you see you as. This is the person you're living as, and this is the character, this is the ego. And when one's finally had enough stress or enough pain, and they finally want to awaken from this dream, from the character, because all the problems that we face in life are illusionary, they don't matter, they don't exist. We're given them through this character we're living as, through, through giving conscious, consciousness itself a name. At Right at birth, you're automatically giving the creation, the creator, because any being that's a, any human being is a creator. They will one day grow to take internal thought processes, which is energy, and you're extracting that into the external to, to create. So... You're taking an energetic wave pattern and manifesting it into reality. Every single choice you make every single day is a manifestation. You're creating. You're shaping your reality around you. If you had just gone this way instead of that way, maybe something different would have happened. If you had just turned right or, or gone left or gone out this door instead of that door, maybe something different would have happened. You might have saw someone else. It's all by choice. You're shaping your reality by choice every single day. You are the creator. You're, you're the good and the bad. And this is what the Native Americans referred to as the, the, the light wolf and the dark wolf inside of everyone. There's a white wolf and a black wolf, a good and a bad inside of everyone. It's the conscience. And you're both of those beings. And that's what some people who cling to religion cannot accept is that there is no authority figure in the sky or outside the universe that's dictating reality, that we are it, that that's why we have the power to take life or to do as much anything we please. We are the good and the bad. There is no authority figure to stop us from doing anything. We have the choice, the free will, which is what we are given, free will, to do as we please. So we are shaping reality. We are creator. There is no authority figure in the universe that's dictating anything. And this is what's hard to accept for some people who cling to religion. That what they're calling God is not external. Well, not just external, but internal as well. That you are it, and it's everything outside of you as well. Everything is the divine. Everything is equal. And that what they're thinking of as God is the creation that's all around us. It's the divine in everything around us and inside of us. It's the good and the bad, the light and the dark, the male and the female, the above and the below, the moon and the sun. It's the two energies playing at itself. And it's all from one central, one central little point, one focal point. Splitting itself into duality, two. And so we experience two hemispheres of the universe, two hemispheres of the brain. Two sides of each, from micro to macro. 
And so the opening of the third eye is not you going into this deep trance and seeing these figures or, or what you see in DMT. As I said, it's DMT is not required to opening the third eye, but one must understand that opening the third eye is just, it's a, it's a metaphoric term for discovering yourself. So you're not literally opening anything inside of yourself, but discovering the light within your own self. You're realizing and finally killing the ego and stop and you're admitting to yourself that you're not the person you see in the mirror. This is when you open the third eye, real, and you finally, and I'm not saying you just say it to yourself in the mirror, but finally feel it and realize it and mean it. But it's only when you've had enough and want to finally, finally awaken. You can't force it on anybody. The person has to want it. The person has to seek it. Just like Neo. Neo was driven to seek it. He wanted it. He accepted it, and it takes acceptance. The person has to want it. <coughs> because those who don't want it, those who don't need it, are going to simply reject it, turn it away, because they're not ready to awaken yet. So they will deny, they will laugh, they will shame you, they will do anything to defend what they've known their entire lives, and that is the person they see in the mirror. And for some, to be anything other than the person in the mirror is terrifying. However, we wish to be infinite, and it's like when we're living as the person we see in the mirror, we're not living as the infinite. You're, you're living as the temporary. What rots when you die? And so you should detach from what, what rots when you die. You should detach from all things that are finite. Never get too attached to anything that you can lose. It'll drive you insane. So you have to ask yourself, honestly, who am I? Who am I? And if you say your name, then you're again lying to yourself. Because as I said, you cannot give consciousness a actual title name. You're giving consciousness, a conscious being, a, a name. Our names are, I am that I am. We are. We simply are. I am that I am. But like I said, by giving a name at birth, you are now a part of the matrix system. You are now living as the veil, as the character. And we get so lost in it, and that's what kills the, the childlike view of the world. A child views the, the universe pure and magic. That's what it is. That's slowly killed as you enter the matrix as the character through school, indoctrination, and then working your life away every day. The character you're living as, day by day, you get consumed by it. You see everyone else's lifestyles and you envy theirs. You compare yourself to everyone else because you're living as this veil. And you're creating all these illusionary problems for yourself because money is, is so important to us as the character. Money is only important when you don't know who self is. People only think money is happiness or money will make your life easier when you don't know who you are. And it's a fact. If you know who you are, then money doesn't make life any easier. You do. Because you now discover happiness is no specific place outside of yourself. Happiness is no person outside of yourself. No person can complete you or make you happy other than self. That you are your own savior through your own mind, through being consciously aware of who you are. And this is the opening of the third eye, realizing self. That when you pray, you're closing your eyes to look inside of yourself and you're not consciously aware of who you're talking to. You're thinking and praying to something outside of yourself and so... You're speaking your intentions, but you're not consciously aware of who you're talking to, and so you're just speaking them, and you're, you're letting them go. 
because you're waiting for something outside of yourself to to take your wishes and prayers and make them happen. When you're consciously aware of your, what you're saying and who you're talking to when you close your eyes, then you're now consciously aware that only you can and in, in manifest that through your intent. That there is nothing outside of you, there is nothing outside the universe that's going to make these things happen other than yourself. There is no being in the sky that's going to say, you've worked hard enough so I'm going to allow this to happen for you. Or you don't deserve this because you did this. There's no authority figure dictating anything. When you pray, you're closing your eyes to look within yourself and you're talking to self. That's why God always hears when you talk. Not out loud, but within. Because the kingdom of heaven is within. And so you have the control, you have the power, just simply by realizing who self is. You're liberated from all these illusionary problems, from the character, from the day-by-day stresses that you create for yourself through this person. And you realize that none of this is really important. None of it really matters because you are not the person you're living as every single day. You're only shorting yourself. You think you're just this person. You think you're just this small little person. We begin life with all the questions of what this is and why this is and how this is because it's everything outside of you that you are inside of this person perceiving itself. You're everything outside of you inside of this small body through this small focal point of consciousness, and you're expanding it to become aware of everything outside of you. And that's why you naturally have the questions to ask why this is and what this is. You're becoming aware of what you are. However, not everybody discovers that. Some people die never knowing. And as I said, that's fine. It's not all people need it. Not all people seek the liberation. Not all people seek the help. Not all people need it. It takes misery and pain and suffering and stress, insomnia, depression, all of it, anxiety, to to want to awaken from the dream. One must suffer. You must suffer enough as the person you're, you're living as to finally realize you've had enough and you want to awaken. You want to realize who you are. And what we realize is that all these movies we watch are similar. They're quite exact the same to our reality. There's nothing nothing separating the movies we watch to our realities. You can think of um, a million different movies and you can compare those a million different movies to the a million different uh, people or perceptions around the world. It's all a story. It's all a scenario. It's all a triumph, good over evil. It's all something happening. The good versus the bad, a character. It's the same thing as reality. There is nothing separate from the movies we watch, from these characters we create. The characters we create in movies are the same as this little focal point, the universe, experiencing itself through us as characters. And that's what we are. We're getting lost in ourselves as the characters, and we're slowly forgetting who we are. Precisely exactly what we're doing with video games and creating, we're creating other things, basically mimicking our exact realities. And it's like, you have to ask yourself, why are we doing these things? Get to the root of it. Some people don't think in in depth this far into things, but when you really get to the core of why do we create video games for ourselves, really get to the root of it. You're creating a simulation for your reality here. And then you think think of above ourselves Why are we here? Because something created this to experience itself. And so on and so on and so on. It could be like a Russian doll. You die and then you experience yourself again and again and again and again.
<laughs> on the red bus. Lucky you. I love those red buses. With two stories on them. But all we're doing by creating video games is us, we're having fun with a simulation or simulated reality. All these are playing a different possibility. We're playing a character or a role that's entertaining us or keeping us at the edge of our seat. And it's like, ask yourself, why are we here and why are we doing what we're doing? We're keeping this energy, what we call God, we're keeping this energy playing this game with itself and we're keeping this energy at the edge of its seat, metaphorically, and we're playing this character getting lost in ourselves just as we play video games and get lost in the game. It's for entertainment. It's for fun. You have to ask yourself, why or what would you do if you were the divine energy? If you were this formless energy, and when I say formless, that means literally formless. It has no indefinite shape, no uh, definite shape or form, right? So... You'd have to create space and solid matter to take up that space. And you would slowly create a magnificent illusion to get lost in your own game, to play your own game, to play your own self. But you can't know that you're the game. You can't know that you're the creator. You can't know that you're all of it. So you're magnificently tricking yourself. You're birthing yourself as it. And you're only slowly becoming consciously aware of yourself. You can't just be born already knowing. And so you slowly get lost in life and you open your consciousness to expand and ask the questions of who and why and what. And you meet personalities and different characters along the way, but they're all a form of you and different perceptions. And just as you are trying to find what, they're, what you're searching for, they're trying to find what they're searching for. We're all searching for something because we are all the one being reincarnating. We are all the one playing of energy experiencing itself and like i said we're not aware of it because we can't be aware we are the, the creator we can't be aware we are already are the whole and so we trick ourselves through the game and this is why this is how we play and the conspiracies and all the stuff that you you ponder along the way are just a part of the awakening all the government files and all the conspiracy things are just a part of yourself, you awakening to yourself. They're stepping stones to you realizing the bigger picture of self. <coughs> Most people are searching, I feel. However, we're being made to try and forget. Because everywhere we look, there's, there's garbage, nonsense, like... The people who speak about life and the universe and stuff, they barely get any shares, barely get any followers, but you notice the videos with, with fights and people getting their heads stomped into the concrete and stuff. They just, just 5 million views, 6 million views, 10,000 shares. The people want the garbage nowadays and the people want to see the people beat the crap out of each other. We're being, we're being slowly, how do I say this? Polluted in the minds to want garbage. We don't want to seek the stuff anymore. So it's not that we're running, but our minds are under psychological warfare through all the content we're, we're being fed through social medias and, and TV and everywhere we look. Everywhere we look is garbage and crap. And we're feeding it to our bodies. We're feeding it to our minds. And, and therefore, it's very, very easy for us to forget. It's a psychological warfare game. And the people who call people like me crazy are the people who are unaware they're living in a, in a prison in their own minds. They're completely unaware. And to me, it gets no crazier than that. If you're not even aware you're, you're living in your own prison of the mind, it gets no more crazy. It gets no more insane. To me, that is pure insanity.
I hear what you say about that. And I, I'm, I myself as well as an empath. But one thing we have to do as empaths is we have to fully master the, the, the practice of balance. Because what we'll find is empaths, we, we pour our hearts out and we will allow ourselves to feel the pain to where we ourselves are suffering and become a part of the depression or a part of whatever suffering it is we're seeing. What we have to do is practice the, the mastery of balance. Yes, emphasize what we can control and, and you feel to a certain extent, but what's beyond your control, you simply have to let go. And it's, it's hard to say, it's hard to admit, but it's it, an infinite cycle of these two energies of good and bad, and they will always exist beyond your control. The good will always be as long as the bad is, and vice versa. The sun and the moon and the male and female, the two energies will always be. They're infinite. They have to be. So what you have to understand is the good will always be where the bad and vice versa. They have to be. And it's an illusion. It's, it's a, a human wish. We wish that it, it could be perfect. However, this is an illusion. The two playing of these energies will always be. And we have to let go of what we cannot control. And take control of what we can. The balance. Like if you see something happening in front of you that you don't like, yeah, you take control. But for a video you're seeing online, sharing it does not take control. It does nothing for you. And I'm not discouraging people from sharing, but I'm simply saying it doesn't change the situation when you get to the root of it. It's still beyond your control. So I, w I wanted to make this video like about 30 minutes. I don't know how long I'm in here. But I wanted to make it short just for the people asking me because I'm getting a lot of questions. I'm kind of getting off topic. I'm getting a lot of questions asking about the third eye. So I'm just going to reiterate this really fast and I'm going to uh, get off of this uh, live. But um, I get a lot of questions about the third eye and it's people expecting to experience a trance or something within their mind that they're going to see or it's like something they're they're expecting to go into a trip or something and it's not always just that like opening the third eye is just metaphorically speaking of you opening your inner self your inner eye becoming aware of your inner self that the two eyes outside of you are not who you are this is a part of the duality and all that is a part of the duality is a part of the dream there's nothing in existence or that is real technically beyond the central self. All that is, exists in the, dual, in the dual state of the duality is a part of the dream. So just as we're trying to decipher life and death and, and, and beginning and end, they're a part of the duality. They're not, they're not real. The central self is all that is. And so you realize, and opening the third eye is realizing that that central point is inside of you, at your penal, and that the two eyes are not what you're really seeing with. And the mouth that I'm speaking with is not really what I am speaking with. The mouth I speak with is my ego, is the, is the person, Tyler, the person I'm living as, the veil. But I'm speaking through the focal point because I'm consciously aware of who I am. And so I'm speaking through the focal point and not as the ego or the character. But the opening of the third eye is none other than realizing who self is. When you finally had enough of playing this game, you will look into that mirror and finally say, I'm tired of living as you. I'm tired of pretending. I'm tired of, of creating my problems for myself. And I am that I am. I am that I am. I'm not, I'm not you in the mirror. I'm not you in the mirror and I'm not the problems you bring. The problems you create, I am that I am.
And that's why you can stare at yourself in a mirror all day, all night. You can define yourself in that mirror by description. You can describe yourself till you're peeling your skin off your face and driving yourself mad because you'll, you'll find that everything you're describing about yourself is not who you are. It's nothing of the physical or of, that you're seeing in the mirror that, that you are. That's not who you truly are. So at the end of defining yourself all day and night, you'll still have the question of who am I? And it's because you're not admitting to yourself you're not the body. It's as simple as that. You admit to yourself you're not the body, you're not the ego, you're not the character. You are the whole creator, the, all of it, the whole. You're every single thing, every single thing, I mean that, outside of yourself, inside this veil, inside of this focal point of consciousness, becoming aware of self. Everything outside of you is your mirror, not the one you see in the mirror. The one you see in the mirror is the ego tricking you and telling you you are the person you see in the mirror. And that's why we worry about our hair and our and we get plastic surgery and we have to form and conform into this perfect plastic mold because we feel we have to be perfect for everyone else because we're living as this character and we're creating all these problems for ourselves. We have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. We're ca pr creating this character for everyone else. It's an illusion. Simply admitting you to yourself who you are is the opening of the third eye. And you say to yourself, I am that I am. The name given to me is who I'm pretending to be. I'm living as Tyler day by day. When I go to work, I'm Tyler, but that's not who I am. I am that I am. And it's so funny because a few of my coworkers, every time they say, hey, Tyler, I say, who's Tyler? <laughs> and they say, what are you talking about? And I say, I am that I am. And they just tell me, you're crazy, man. You're crazy. I do it as a joke, though, just to plant small seeds, just so maybe one person might get it, might click with somebody. But they say, hey, Tyler. And I say, who's Tyler? And I say, I am that I am. They say, you're crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm consciously aware of self. That's the opening of the third eye. But anyway, I have to get off. I hope I explained it in simplest terms without rambling too much for you people. I'm sorry. Um, if anyone still has any questions, though, please uh, feel free to ask or reach out. Um, everyone have a good Monday and love you all.